Hello, Phil Swan here again with another quick episode of Together, looking at bringing together your well-being, your good mental health and the Christian hope. <clears throat> now, you probably would be a really unusual person if you failed to notice a few weeks ago the interview that took place between Harry and Meghan and Oprah. Apparently over 11 million people have watched it in the UK and over 17 million in the USA and I'm sure that number will grow. Personally I'm not one of those who did watch the interview but I gleaned enough from the comment in the media and on social media that this was an important moment in their lives, particularly in Meghan's life it seems where she had her opportunity to tell her story. Telling our story is a really important thing for good well-being. So often the events of life become jumbled up, they kind of roll into one, we can forget things that have happened, and worst of all, we fail to work through the things that have happened to us. So being able to tell your story, and everyone has a story, to someone who genuinely takes an interest in you and is there to listen is an extremely valuable tool. We all love stories, particularly stories about people's lives. It's why autobiographies and biographies and chat shows are so popular and so many people find interest in them. How can you move towards telling your story? Maybe your story is very painful. Maybe your story is very bleak. And inevitably, if you really tell your story, it will have within it some deeply personal things. Perhaps if we really told our story, we would find ourselves talking about things that we'd never talked about before. How can that be helpful? Well, I want to say first of all that telling your story doesn't actually have to happen to someone in the room who's listening. A really good way of telling your story is to, is to write it out, to make a journal. Not in a pretentious sense that it's going to be a bestseller or anything like that, or even in the sense that anyone else will read it. You see, telling our story to ourselves matters. And perhaps we are the best people to hear our own story, and ironically, the very people we don't talk to about our story. Now, don't get worried, I'm not just encouraging you to talk to yourself, I'm encouraging you to acknowledge your story because your story matters. Telling our story, whether we speak to someone else who really cares or whether we simply write it down, helps to validate those experiences and to recognise that they really happened. It also helps to order our thoughts because often our thoughts are very jumbled up and when they're jumbled up, invariably our thoughts become very negative about ourselves and we feed our inner critic. Journaling about our past, our story, is a great way of ordering those thoughts. And it also helps to move us towards processing experiences. For example, often we may judge what we did when we were 14 or 15 or something like that with all the experience that we may now have as a fully mature adult. That's really unfair. And telling your story helps you recognise the man or the boy or the girl that you were at that age. It also helps to recognise maybe what was going on in other people's lives because other people are inevitably part of our story as well. I wonder if you ever thought about the fact that God has a story he does. Actually, what the Bible presents to us is the story of God. Story not in the sense of something made up, but like your life, absolutely real. And the story of God in the Bible is very easy to follow. There are certain key moments. There is the fact that he has made us and the fact we rebelled against him, creation and fall. And then there's the fact of him making a special promise with a unique group of people, the covenant in the Old Testament with the children of Israel, and how the whole of the Old Testament is really a story of God's covenant faithfulness to a people who are often unfaithful. And then as we roll into what we know as the New Testament, we of course have our focus on the story of Jesus, with his birth in Bethlehem, 
coming to us as God and man, and in a life that eventually focuses on his death and his resurrection and ascension back into heaven. At which point it's very easy to almost close the Bible and say, well, that was the story of God. But you know what? God's story is still rolling on. And the amazing thing is that you and I can become part of this story because that's precisely what he invites us to in the gospel. That all that he has been doing in the world, particularly in and through Jesus, by his life, death and resurrection, was done to draw challenged, struggling, ordinary folks like you and me into the knowledge of God and to become children of God. It is an amazing story. God's story is still being written in the world today. The question is, are you part of it? And the amazing thing is, you can be. Well, may God bless and keep you safe today and encourage you to explore both your story and the story of God.